Thank you, James. Um, try and press this green button. There we go. Uh, thank you all for uh, your time tonight. Today I'm going to have a quick talk about what we're doing with some DWDM solutions in our network. Um, as James mentioned, primarily between campuses, but certainly um, applicable to within campus too. <coughs> so this is a challenge that we in Sire face. We have approximately 55 sites spread out across Australia, and that slide is actually slightly out of date now. We've got another one in WA, and uh, the challenge only grows. Um, so uh, the, the solution that we have to deal with, um, we've got many different service providers, obviously. Um, we have quite a few Arnet links, both dark fibre and um, optical services across uh, interstates, and how we interface to those services. And we've got more than Arnet dark fibre services in, in some states. In, say, ACT, we have ICON. In South Australia, we have SabreNet. Um, in Tasmania, Trend. And uh, basically, it's getting the, getting the best use out of those services. Um, we have our own fibre in some places, but not, not, um, not in very many places. And so it's, it's very much a challenge to try and use that infrastructure in the best way possible. And as I say here, part of the solution is the, the wave division, division multiplexing services. So we quite often, so this is, this is South Australia, the, our fibre diagram for South Australia. We have some Sabernet links in South Australia and they're only limited to a single pair. So quite often we will put a, a MUX service on them to run uh, multiple services across those single pairs. So it gives us better, better use of our expensive infrastructure that we've um, leased from Sabernet or from other, other service providers. Um, many of the links too that we're running, some of them are rather longer, so you're using, you need a, a ZR service, any, a ZR optic anyway, so it just leads on to, to using WDM services as well. Um, we also use um, optical wavelengths from Arnet into, between our states, so quite often we will, we'll do multiple services into Arnet, so there's um, muxes on those, on those po um, links in there as well. And, um, with, with our net managed muxes on them. So these are some of the products that we're currently using. Um, we are currently using Cisco CWDM and DWDM muxes in the, in the top right hand corner. Um, give you eight CWDM channels with piggybacked on top of that eight um, C um, DWDM channels. Um, there are other options. The other option is the uh, Cisco ONS DWDM muxes, so that you can actually um, piggyback multiple of those four-port muxes on a single CWDM wavelength. Um, I think, for example, the uh, 1550, you can actually put four four-channel mux, four-port four muxes on on that single wavelength, and uh, which will then obviously give you 16 DWDM channels. But then you can also go and put another four or eight DWM channels on other CWDM channels. So that gives you um, high capacity on a single pair of fibre. So um, certainly gives you better value for money. Um, as far as the, the muxes, we found them very cost effective compared to buying fibre services. And uh, we're also using vendor neutral optical transceivers. So a lot of our DWDM, EWDM, um, LR CWDM optics come from Flex Optics. Um, they're a crowd in uh, Germany that um, we, we buy from. They're providing us very good service at the moment. Um, we were, a long time ago, buying vendor optics, and everybody who's bought vendor optics knows how stupidly priced vendor optics are. Um, we're buying these vendor neutral optics now, and the Flex, Flex box in the top right corner actually gives you the opportunity to then um, code them to your uh, like your um, vendor that you're using. Um, we haven't had any issues with, with using them with different vendors. I can't call any time that a vendor has actually come back to, us and said, back to us and said, oh, your dodgy optics is causing the issue. Put, a, put one of ours in. Um, we, we have been prepared to do that, but we haven't had to. Um, most of these will work quite happily, so we use this on all, in prim primarily all of our network gear, but we're... Uh, coercing our, our server teams into use them as, using them as well. So we, we have both SR, LR, CWDM, 10 gig, and DWDM in ER and ZR in all of our network equipment. 
with no with no issues. Um, Flex Optics also provide our cell a, uh, a tunable optic that you can actually change wavelengths for. So if you want to do some testing or if you have a, a need for a particular wavelength at a particular time, you can have um, have those on hand as uh, wind them up to the right to the right uh, wavelength with your flex packs, and off you go. And quite often we'll use we'll use those as an interim solution while we buy others and replace them and keep them as a test a test um, or a uh, get out of trouble card. Uh, the other the other plus from those two is the flex box with the different DWDM optics can actually act as a uh, a basic OTDR or a power meter as well. So there's um, a lot of uh, usefulness out of that. Um, just on the price there, if anybody's interested in, I'm happy, happy to give you uh, contacts for those those people. But uh, your pricing may vary because we buy a lot from them. So I think uh, it, it depends a bit on uh, on how much you're buying from them as to how much discount they give you. And just on some of the future things that we're playing with at the moment, we've uh, had to play with some of the flex optics um, transceivers with 40 gig on multiple wavelengths on a single pair of single mode fibre. We're working with some um, 100 gig smart optics transponders to do a data center extension from our main data center in Canberra through to one of our other sites to put some science research storage and, uh, and compute. Um, obviously, we're, we're aggregating multiple 10 gig services into port channels for higher throughput. And we're also working at the moment on some fiber monitoring solutions from another provider that will actually um, sit on the fiber and it will basically fault test the fibre. So if there's a fault, we can then go back to our local fibre supplier and say, your fibre's broken, fix it, or watch degra de degradation over time. Uh, we've also got, um, as part of CSIRO, we are, we're part of the Pawsey Supercompute super facility. So we're now working on 100 gig super, um, links between Pawsey and certainly Curtin, and then up to the uh, Murchison Research Observatory up in, uh, in Murchison in in Western Australia, so also known as the Australian Square Kilometre Pathway uh, Pathfinder Array, I think, and uh, the the future Square Kilometre Array. Uh, that's about all I had to to cover. I'm happy if uh, if we want any questions now. Or do you want to leave them, James?